All right, hello everyone out there in YouTube land. Uh, so today we're going to talk about track maps uh, and the various options uh, that are available in the Z1 software that allow you to customize that app. So right now uh, I've got a track map open and uh, if we go to my settings dialog under the track map, we have all these options here. And I'm going to go through uh, what some of these do and uh, show you how they affect what the track map looks like uh, so you can customize the track map to your liking. So the first thing you notice is all these color options here on the left uh, for the cars. So each car on the track map is uh, displayed as a dot on the map and you can choose what colors you want for many of those cars. Uh, so if your car, uh, the leader car, the car ahead of you, car behind you, uh, cars that are in pits, uh, off track, and everybody else. Uh, so to customize one of these, you just click on the C icon, which brings up this color chooser, and then you can choose a new color. So if you want your car to be, say, green, click on green, click OK, and uh, now I have a green dot for me. And my car will be rendered uh, with a green uh, circle here. I'm actually not in the car at the moment, so I don't appear on this track map. But you'll notice that on here, uh, my name is highlighted in green, because that was the color I chose for that uh, option. Going back to the track map, uh, the next thing uh, that you can customize is the sectors. So uh, in uh, most sims, there are three sectors uh, in a lap. Uh, iRacing tends to have more than three, uh, sometimes going up to as many as about 10 or even 11. So uh, the Z1 software allows you to choose a color for the first sector, the second sector, and the third sector. Uh, and in iRacing, if you go past that, then it just rotates back. So you would have the fourth, fifth, and sixth, uh, et cetera, going to however many you need. So you can choose these colors the same way. You click the C icon and select the desired color. Now the sector width is uh, how wide the sector is when it gets rendered over the track. So by default, we've set it to be just one pixel wider than the track uh, because then it highlights the whole track. But if you wanted it to be much wider, say 10 uh, pixels wide, you could do that. And uh, the effect of that, I click OK, is like this. Uh, and some people might prefer to have much more of a highlighted uh, track map with the track line in the middle. And we also offer three different uh, sector rendering options. The solid line, which we just saw, a dashed line, or a dotted line. So let's look at uh, the dashed line, which just looks like this, exactly the same, but with dashes. And then we can change that to dots if we like as well. And there we have a whole bunch of dots. Personally, I prefer the uh, solid one, so I'm going to change it back to the solid. We also have uh, track options. So you can change the color of the track and the width of the track. And by default, you have a black track uh, and a um, width of three pixels wide. Say you didn't want to have it be black. Say you wanted it to be a bit lighter. Maybe you wanted more of a gray. So you can adjust that. Click OK. And again, if you want a different width, say you want a wider track. I want to render it. Uh, it's wider and it's in gray, which actually is a bit difficult to tell with the uh, sectors on. So the next option here to show sectors, I can turn those off if I want. And now we have just the track map with no, uh, no sector overlay. I happen to like the uh, sector, so I'm going to turn them back on. And one option actually is practice, where you can have them on just for practice sessions and off in the race. I leave them on all the time. Uh, the create map option. This allows you to choose when a track map should be created. Uh, if blank is usually the best option. So if you do not have a track map uh, uh, existing for the uh, track, if blank will create one if it doesn't exist. Uh, never, obviously, will never create a track map. Uh, and always, every time you do a new lap, it will recreate track map. Uh, this isn't always the best option to have, uh, because if you saved 
a uh, track map that you like uh, as a graphic, you don't want to constantly recreate it. Um, but if you don't mind about the track map constantly being tweaked and recreated, then always is an acceptable option as well. So there are two options for how the track map is rendered, and that's with vector and graphic. The current style is vector. Uh, so if I go to my track map, this map is actually drawn uh, using uh, vectors. So that means if I make this much bigger, this track map is still extremely smooth and uh, renders really nicely. If I change this to graphic, which was the old style, so when the track maps are created, a uh, PNG image file for every map is saved into uh, the documents uh, slash sim name slash tracks folder. If you use the graphic option, that graphic will be loaded instead of the uh, vector drawing. The only downside to this is that if you have a larger uh, screen, that track map can look a bit pixely. But the advantage to it is you can mark up that track map and uh, put things like turn numbers or other notes on using Photoshop or any other graphic software. So there are two options we haven't talked about yet. Uh, first is car class. You can choose fill or you can choose outline. So in a multi-class race, each car class will have a color associated with it. And you can choose to have the dots for the car rendered with that color as the fill color or as the outline color. And this makes it easy to see where the various car classes are on the track map. Uh, personally, I use the fill color because I find it easier to see the whole dot, but if you prefer to have just the outline, you can choose that as well. Now, the final option for track maps is the wind placement. So you can choose uh, off, center, top left, top right, bottom left, or bottom right. And this determines where the wind arrow is rendered on the track map. So let's choose top left for this so now, the top left, I have the wind speed and wind direction uh, as it is right now in the sim. And note that not all sims support the wind features. So if you don't see it there, it's most likely that the sim does not output the data necessary to render that information. So those are the track map options. Hopefully this has been useful uh, to help you understand how you can customize the track map and get it to display to your liking. So for other videos about the Z1 software, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, visit our website at www.z1-board.com.